All right, thank you everybody for joining us today. And I would like to thank HackerOne, not only for sponsoring the Red Team Village this year, but you have been a very, very good partner throughout the years. So thank you uh, for your support. And with that said, I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Greg, to ask you a couple of questions. Hey, Dane, thanks again for uh, sponsoring the uh, the Red Team Village. We only have three or 400 questions that we're going to go, go over with. No, I'm kidding. Um, so for the thousands and thousands of viewers that we don't have, if you would tell us a little bit about you and what you do for HackerOne. Yeah, happy to, and very happy to be here and glad to be supporting Red Team Village. Uh, first off, my name is uh, Dane Sheritz, and I'm a senior solutions architect with HackerOne. As a solutions architect, I serve on the uh, security advisory team and help our customers improve their security posture with our platforms and uh, with our platform and services, with a, with a focus on working with the hacker community. And in my free time, I also enjoy doing some uh, bug bounty hunting a, a bit myself. That's awesome. So. So why does your company believe that the red team operations that everyone does is, is so important in the industry? Yeah, so in general, I think any kind of uh, adversarial type, and test, type of testing is essential for organizations once your assets reach a certain level of uh, security maturity, right? It's having those SAS, DAS security scans and the uh, compliance focused pen tests are important for hardening your attack surface. But at a certain point, you're gonna need that weaponized curiosity of skilled hackers to find uh, novel and elusive bugs in your assets. And yeah. when you have a well-run bug bounty program specifically, you're gonna find unique vulnerabilities that are much more similar to what an adversary would uh, exploit in the real world type of attack scenario. That's so true. And I've got to ask because it's all the rage, <laughs> what with AI shaking up the industry that everybody thinks, uh, how is it affecting you and your industry? Yeah, it's impossible to, to make it through a, a talk without talking about AI these days, right? Um, so really when I think about, uh, the AI of today, I'm not, not going to talk about like 10 years, 20 years down the line, but the, the AI of today, there's typically three groups I think about as it relates to cybersecurity. It's, uh, the attackers, defenders, and implementers. So attackers, I'm typically talking about like bug bounty hunters, pen testers, red teamers, et cetera. Uh, I'll start by saying, I think we're a long way from AI fully replacing the attacker. But I think today it's already incre incredibly helpful as a uh, assistant or, or a helper, right? For doing things like generating payloads, uh, generating word lists, helping you understand code and, and maybe a language you don't already know, for writing code and, and quickly spinning up some TOCs. Uh, and for uh, report generation, I think it's also pretty helpful, especially for some hackers in our community that English might be their second language and they're reporting vulnerabilities to a primarily English speaking team. I think uh, there's a lot of value in and using um, AI for, for those kinds of uh, cases. Uh, for defenders, I mean, I think it's just impossible to overstate how impactful it's going to be as we uh, have tools to quickly sift through the mountains of data that come in when, when dealing with incidences, incidents or, or responding to things that come through a SOC. Now you're, you're, respond, or you're, you're looking at the simplicity of the logs that Windows generates. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, they're so small, especially if, anyway. No. But how, how, does, uh, how does your company see red teaming evolving and, and making impacts? Yeah, so really when I think about um, how it's gonna make an impact, I, I, I'm gonna keep my answer sort of focused on the bug bounty world, but I think there's gonna be an evolution in what is tested and, and how it's tested. So kind of starting with you know, what is tested, I think today a lot of programs might put their web app or mobile applications in scope, and, and maybe sometimes they'll allow for all subdomains of various of a given domain to be in scope as well. But, you know, philosophically, does that fully capture your, uh, your entire attack surface, right? I, I think as a bug bounty evolves, we'll start to see the concept of uh, scope evolve as well. And, and we're already seeing uh, today that the more mature a customer becomes, the more they, they treat their brand as part of their scope. So uh, these customers treat anything that could impact the trust of users as something that they'd want to defend against. So you know, this could look like them paying more for vulnerabilities further down in their supply chain or a video game company paying for hackers for bypassing some of their anti-cheat implementations. Uh, we see a little bit of this today, but I think it's going to become a little bit more widespread as, as the years go on. And uh, I think we're also starting to see hackers or organizations want to work with hackers further left in their SDLC. So 
having people find bugs in code before it's pushed to production. And it's something we try to help facilitate with our, our code review products. But generally speaking, I think there's going to be a desire from organizations to have folks with a hacker mindset help them in ways that are different than what organizations have done in the past. Uh, going on to the how it's tested piece, I think as scope evolves, so will the, uh, the tools and techniques and hackers use to find vulnerabilities. So I, I got to say, working at Hacker One, it's it's really fascinating to see the kind of a uh, recon arms race that has been uh, happening with recon automation setups over the years. And I think as compute is getting cheaper, becoming more widely available, it's making me pretty bullish on the kind of vulnerabilities and uh, assets hackers are going to be able to find. And going back to the AI piece here, I think it's often been the case that uh, you know you could be really recon data rich, but insights poor, but uh, AI and, and LLMs change all that. And now everyone has their uh, assistant that can, can help them code. Yeah, I think that uh, Hacker One is an invaluable service to companies that you really want to, it's worth paying a little bit as you go, as opposed to being in the news and costing yourself a fortune later on. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have any, any words to all the thousands of red teamers watching uh, that you might want to suggest or advise, or especially if they ever come to work for Hacker One? Yeah, so I, I think that, um, you know, the, the main piece of advice for, for hackers, red teamers, I, I, any, anyone in general is just staying curious, right? I think as technology is constantly evolving, uh, so are the vulnerabilities. So whether it's you know, learning more about GraphQL, smart contracts, LLMs, I, I just encourage everyone to, uh, to poke around and, and build things and break things and, and just kind of always stay, stay, try to stay ahead of the attackers. And uh, I mean, anyone that's, that's watching this today can start working with HackerOne by, by signing up and becoming a hacker on our platform. Uh, it's really quick and easy. And it, at least uh, even without uh, logging in or creating an account, you can check out our activity page and see some of the really cool types of vulnerabilities hackers in our community, community are finding every day. And that's yeah, hackerone.com slash I'm a, I'm a proud member, I, I must say. Very cool. I, I do love the HackerOne. Um, so what do you think about the importance of sponsoring community-driven uh, villages like the RTV? Yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, we're a platform with a uh, two-sided marketplace, right? So we obviously have our customers, but uh, the other half of that marketplace is, is the hackers. And that's why we're really proud and excited to sponsor community-driven events like uh, Recon Village. And you know, we want to give back to the community and help them in their journey as they grow their, their skill set. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have any final words before we uh, we wrap this one up? Well, yeah, I would, I would just say uh, we have a we're help, helping out with a number of events uh, this DEF CON and Black Hat. We have a Black Hat session uh, on AI so at, at a booth there, uh, both Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we will also be hosting a hands-on hacking workshop with Meta at the Red Team Village on Saturday morning, and we are also co-hosting a AI and policy happy hour at the policy villages on a uh, village on Friday evening. And uh, I'll also be at the conference. So if you see me around, uh, please, please say, Hey, well, I'll be in the, in the village. So yeah, you won't be able to miss me or Omar. We'll be the, uh, the strange guys pointing at stuff. That's awesome. Excellent. So once again, Vane, and, and on behalf of the DEF CON Red Team Village, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hacker one for supporting uh, us throughout the years. Our village has been very successful throughout the years and it would have been possible definitely without your support and commitment. So before I lose my voice, thank you. Thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. And I'll hope you to see you next week in Vegas. Yep. We'll see you at DEF CON.